Today we've got four resistors hooked up in a Wheatstone bridge, and we're using an ammeter as the bridge from one side of the circuit to the other. And in this problem today, we're going to go through and solve for the amount of current which passes through this bridge as a function of the four resistors. And I want to show you what happens to the current through the bridge as we vary one of these resistors. Now you can go through and use the loop rule and the junction rule to try to go through and solve this problem. But what I want to do today is just use a much simpler method and that is simply reduce the circuit down to a equivalent resistor and then work backwards to solve for the current through each of these four components. Now realize this current meter or ammeter has no resistance. It's effectively just a wire or a short. So we can actually redraw the circuit as this, two sets of resistors which are in parallel with one another. Now you'll notice I left out the ammeter because the ammeter isn't playing a role as we reduce the circuit down to an equivalent resistance. So combining each of these sets of resistors in parallel, we get this circuit, which is just two resistors in series with one another. Now I know it's going to bother you that I put one of these resistor values as a fraction and the other as a decimal, but uh, I'm sorry, we're just going to have to move on from that one. Uh, but anyhow, these two resistors are in series, so we can reduce this further down to the equivalent resistance. So now that we've taken this original circuit and broken it down into its equivalent resistance, we can now work backwards to solve for the current through each of these four components. So starting over here at our equivalent circuit, we're going to solve for the current coming out of the battery. Using Ohm's law, we know the voltage of the battery is equal to the current coming out of the battery multiplied by the equivalent resistance. And we find the current coming out of the battery is 3.79 amps. And realize the current coming out of the battery in this circuit is the same as the current coming out of the battery on this circuit. Now realize because these resistors are in series with one another, these 3.79 amps are going to have to pass through each one of these resistors. And that means we can solve for the voltage across each of these resistors. Starting with this resistor, the voltage across our 2 thirds ohm resistor is going to be the current. That's 3.79 amps multiplied by the value of the resistor. That's 2 thirds. Which means there's 2.53 volts across this resistor right here. And doing similar math for this other resistor, we'll find the voltage across this 1.7 ohm resistor is the current multiplied by the resistor. So knowing the voltages across each of these components, we now know the voltages across these resistors in parallel here, as well as down here, which is going to allow us to solve for the current through each of these four resistors. So looking at this one ohm resistor, we know there's 2.53 volts across a one ohm resistor. And those same 2.53 volts are across this two ohm resistor. Then looking down here, there's 6.47 volts across this resistor. And 6.47 volts across this 4 ohm resistor. Now it's important at this point to stop and check to make sure we've reduced the circuit down correctly and then solve backward for each of these four components. Now you'll notice the current through resistors one and two adds up to the current coming out of the battery. And the current going through resistors three and four also adds up to the current coming out of the battery. And that's because the current or the charge, regardless of which resistor it passes through, must go through one of these two resistors. And then it all comes back together in this wire, then it must go through one of these two resistors as well. Now having solved for each of these four components, I want to go through and solve for the actual current across this bridge in our original circuit. Now 
Now you'll remember earlier, I mentioned we could do this problem without getting stuck or caught up in the junction rule and the loop rule, and that's mostly true, but the catch is right here at this point. I wanna look at this junction or this convergence of wires right here. You'll notice there's 2.53 amps of current coming in through this one ohm resistor. Now, moving out from this junction, there's 2.16 amps. That means there's more current coming in than is going out, unless some of that current passes this way through the ammeter. And that's what we're trying to solve for. See, the junction rule says that the total current into a junction must equal the total current out. So if there's 2.53 amps coming in, that's gonna to need to equal the current through our ammeter plus the current through this three ohm resistor. And we find the current through the ammeter is 0.37 amps. And we can check this result by looking at the right hand side of our Wheatstone bridge because the junction rule not only applies at this junction, but at any junction, including this one right here. So looking right here, there's 1.27 amps coming in plus there's whatever current that passed through the ammeter. And that should equal the current coming out of this junction, that is the current passing through the four ohm resistor. And while this doesn't work out exactly perfect, it's because through all of this, I've managed to round a little bit, uh, but ultimately this in fact checks out. Now you might've noticed through all of this, I drew this four ohm resistor as being a variable resistor. And what I wanna do is show you what happens to the current through this ammeter or this bridge as we vary the value of this resistor. So looking at the graph of current through the ammeter as a function of the variable resistor, you'll notice at one end where the variable resistor is zero, the resistor is effectively a short. And ultimately what it's doing is bypassing the three ohm resistor you'll see all the current which passes through the one ohm resistor passes through the ammeter, then out and back to the battery. Now at the other end of the spectrum, you'll see the resistor, when it has an infinite resistance, it really is just gonna act like an open switch. Ultimately what that means is our ammeter is gonna be measuring the current which passes through the two ohm resistor. Now it's important to recognize here, in the situation where we had zero ohms on the variable resistor, the current was going from left to right. But if we open the switch or, or produce infinite resistance on that variable resistor, the current's gonna go from right to left. And it's important to realize right to left versus left to right current, those are gonna have two different opposite signs. And we see that on the graph. And while what we choose to call positive and negative is a little bit arbitrary, realize when we go back to where we applied the junction rule, any current traveling from left to right through the ammeter was in fact a positive value. So if we have current traveling the opposite way or from right to left, that's gonna show up as negative current. So this has been how to solve for the current through the bridge on an unbalanced Wheatstone bridge. I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.